Coach Anthony Petrillo. Bishop Foley, University of Detroit Jesuit, and Rochester Adams, beginning in 1986 and has coached for 31 years. He has coached eight conference championship teams with impressive conference, consecutive conference wins of 19 games twice. Has qualified for the state playoffs for 14 years, winning five district titles and four regional championships. Rochester Adams was the Division II state champions in 2003 with a 12-2, 12-win, two-loss season. Seven times he was selected as Oakland Activities Association Coach of the Year and was Bishop Foley's first Prep Bowl Catholic League Coach of the Year in 1997. Coach Petrito has coached four MHS FCA Academic All-State teams. He is a five-time MHS FCA Regional Coach of the Year and in 2003 was named the MHS FCA Division II State Coach of the Year. He will be returning to Rochester Adams this coming fall. Coach Petrito's most humorous incident in coaching. It just definitely has been the dialogue over the headsets with my assistant coaches over the years. Even the most high pressure situations, humor has always been a part of the Friday night experience. Coach Petrito's biggest thrill in coaching. Without question, having the opportunity to share the sidelines with my three sons, Mark, Cole, and Anthony. Being blessed to be their coach and father is a very special thing and extremely hard to describe in work. Comments on why coach? I coach because of the great challenge it provides. Lifelong friendships with coaches and teaching life lessons for all the great young men who have invested in this great sport. Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, Coach Anthony Petrillo. Smoke, you didn't cry, so you're making it kind of tough on me. Um, I want to thank uh, the executive committee, especially my good friend Drake Wilkins uh, and the association for giving me this amazing and humbling honor of being in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I also want to congratulate all my uh, fellow inductees. This is a very impressive group. Um, one of the things that I was talking about earlier tonight with some of my very, very close friends is really in our life we have opportunities to thank people we love publicly. Um, we're kind of special, and, and as coaches, we get to make speeches at banquets and things. This is a very, very unique opportunity, and I thank God for the opportunity. No trying to screw it up. Um, I want to thank uh, a couple of my personal mentors, um, Dick Kennedy, who passed away a few years ago, gave me my first uh, varsity assistant coaching job. Uh, Coach Kennedy is beloved by all the Adams people and the Foley people, and some people who know him, and, and I want you to know I'm thinking about him regularly. I want to thank Tony Anise, uh, the head coach at Ferris State University. He has mentored me in, in many, many ways, both as a fifth-year senior with the goofy haircut at Elma College to uh, teaching me almost everything I know about the offense that we now run. And he's an amazing man. He's done a lot of amazing things. Uh, we've all had great mentors. And for me, uh, he has had a huge impact. I also want to thank uh, the administration at Rochester Adams, Mr. Rapp and Mr. Caller here today representing our school. They've supported our program and helped build a culture of success, and we're going to try to keep that going every way we possibly can. I especially want to thank Jack Bill, who's here. I'm glad you made it from the wrestling tournament in time. Uh, and Mark McFarland for nominating me. Uh, this is a humbling business we have. And to have someone take the time and effort to do the paperwork and think enough of you to nominate you is very, very special, and I really, really appreciate that. And if there's people in the room you know, please nominate them because they really deserve it. Um, well, any coach is nothing without great players, and I am very blessed to have been around some great players in my over 30 years of coaching. So I want to kind of separate this out a little bit. So my Foley crew back there, please, can I get a stand up and shout out for me, please? All the Foley alumni, thank you very much. We've got these some Warriors. Uh, back in the late 90s, I was coaching at Bishop Foley. We were in the Central Division then, and our conference schedule included Brother Rice, Theo Sal, and DePores, Bishop Gallagher, Divine Child. It's kind of a gauntlet. We had 25 dudes, courageous as all get out. We won the conference that year and we'll never look back. So thanks guys for that. I'll never ever forget it. You guys are the best. 
Um, I also want to thank all the Adams alum. I know we have a few here. John Bocles here, my son Mark, Stephen Ronselli, Tom Ronselli, the Adams crew. So Adams players, if you're here, can you give me a big one of these, right? Thank you. Awesome. And what's even more special, this is kind of a unique group, is that if I coached you and then you coached with me at some point in time, could you please stand? John Cavanaugh, that includes you. Coach Huston, Coach Bertrand, Coach Campbell, you, you showed up. Very good, awesome. Coach Ron Selle, the greatest gift you can give your coach sometimes is to give back and coach with them. And when those guys came back, I don't care if it's for one day or for five seasons, uh, it makes your life so much more special. So I really appreciate you guys and what you've done for me. So thank you very much. Now, the lifeblood we've heard about from everybody so far is the assistant coaches on any staff. And that word assistant coach is kind of demented. Because um, really, if you have coaches that need that much direction, you're not going to be successful. Every guy at this table is the best with amazing assistants. And I have truly been blessed with some of the best assistant coaches that any coach could ever have. Uh, they carry the program. Um, we'll start in sections. So all of my Foley assistant coaches, can I just get a little stand up over there so you can recognize Coach Chapman, everybody over there, Coach Mayor Foley. Uh, and then also at uh, Rochester Adams, where I'm at now, I have an extended family of men that not only keep me young, keep me entertained. Um, we can't share any of that humor in this room right now. Um, uh, but keep me going and sustain my love for this game. Um, my assistant coaches and my extended family are my sister Adams. Thank you so much, guys. I love you dearly. You are my family. Uh, a special part of that group is Mark McFarlane. I mentioned him really he nominated me. And we get made fun of at our school all the time because we always uh, gush and say nice things about each other, which we're not supposed to do as men. But I will tell you that Mark McFarlane is the best defensive coordinator in the state of Michigan, bar none. Bar, in his opinion, up here at the table. Um, and he's one of the best friends any man could ever have. His wife, Angel, thank you so much for sharing him with me and with our program. Uh, he's an amazing blessing to our players. And a lot of this Hall of Fame ring belongs in his finger. So, Mac, thank you very much. Another person I want to mention who's been very special in terms of his mentoring and coaching with me is Phil Anise, who's Tony's better looking younger brother. Um, he, he has been with me from the beginning, and he was the one with many of those interesting lines on the headsets over the years. You've only been kicked out of a few press boxes over the years. hasn't been too bad. Uh, but he is one of the most knowledgeable people in the entire world when it comes to football. And I can't begin to thank him for all the wonderful calls and all the mentoring you've given me over the years. So, Phil, thank you very much. <laughs> all right, so now this night's all about with his family. So I'm going to start with a 105-year-old woman up in an assisted living in Gaylord. Uh, it's my Nona. Every Friday, I start my day after school with a call of Nona. And she gets on the phone and, holy, oh, have a game today. She has this little tiny voice. And it absolutely drives me. It absolutely just rises me up. I don't care how bad my day was talking to her. And her saying, Bona Fortuna to me means we have a better chance of winning. So if she's not here right now. She's up there hanging out. I'll give her a call tomorrow because she can hear me. So Bona Fortuna to Nona. All right, mom and dad. Now, Unlike Coach Boyd, I didn't grow up in a football family. My parents were in the band at Pershing High School. Um, but I did grow up in a competitive household. There's a story that my mom, who's over there, once chased an official with an umbrella across the field after a middle school football game. So I think maybe that's where I got a little bit of that competitive spirit. So mom, thanks for that. She still denies it. It was before video, by the way. And my dad, um, quiet man, but worked his butt off, went to school at night to become the degree, first one in his family, and set an example of work ethic that I think drives all of us in our family. He's the mentor for all of us, so Pops, thank you very much. My older brother Mike and his family here from uh, Howell. Uh, my older brother Mike is one of the reasons why I'm coaching. He was a coach before me, and I think if he didn't choose to have a career making real money, He'd be up there right now beating this ring instead of me. Um, <clears throat> in all seriousness, he's an amazing person. He's an amazing dad. And he was a great coach and would have been a great coach for many years. So, Mike, bad respect for you. My younger brother, Dave, was on the first team I ever coached. And I'm going to apologize publicly right now for this because I didn't know anything. Um, we did win the JV championship that year, but I had no idea what I was doing, like many of us in our first year. And I want to thank him for tolerating that and helping us win. So, Dave, I love you, brother. Thank you very much. Okay, now for, this is the part I'm going to cry, um, my close, 
close family that I spend every single second, every single day with. Um, before I get into the nuclear family that's in the house, I want to do a shout out to Paul Kleinstar and Ray Fratica. They're honorary retreaters, they are family, they became family through football. Uh, first off, I'm going to start with my oldest son, Mark. Mark, would you stand, please? Um, Mark is uh, an amazing young man. Uh, he's been a great source of inspiration to me. He was a captain and all league player, an Armageddon All State player at Rochester Adams. He's now playing football at Central Michigan University and demonstrates a level of character that I've never seen in a 20 year old. So you're my hero in many ways. Thanks, Mark. My son, Cole. Stand up, please. Cole is the family antagonist, much like his dad. Um, he is one of the toughest, most swaggerific corners you'll ever meet. Uh, he fears absolutely no one. He's presently playing defensive back at Grand Valley. He was a first team all state player in high school. But what defines him is his absolute confidence and his ability to do whatever he wants on the field and off the field. So, Cole, I love you, buddy. You're the man. Thanks. <laughs> Anthony, aka Twan. Anthony's a junior at Mount Rochester Adams. Uh, he has done an amazing job of handling the pressure, not only being a coach's son, but playing behind two great players that went before him. And they have the kind of intestinal fortitude to do that and play the way he did last year and how he needs to play this fall is something pretty special. Anthony, I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, Sage, you have to stand. Sage, yeah. This is my daughter, Sage. She just turned 14. She's an eighth grader. She's an amazing young girl. She's got great class, great dignity. She's the apple of my eye. I love her dearly. And she's a great soccer player and a great student. And I couldn't be more proud. I love you, Sage. <laughs> uh, Evelyn, you have to stand, please. There's my little seven-year-old. Um, I'm going to admit right now publicly I'm the worst dad ever because I can't say no to her for anything. Um, but I absolutely love you. And when you lose your draw, when I see you after a game, I can't not do anything but smile because you make me smile every time. Thank you, Al. <laughs> I mentioned uh, Phil and Nice earlier and how important he's been in my life. Phil's made a lot of great calls over there. Just ask him, he'll tell you. But one of the best calls he ever made was when he, when he and his wife, Vicky, called me up and set me up with uh, Vicky's sister, Sean. And Mike knows, Phil knows, zero game from this guy, so I needed all the help I could get. And uh, I went over there, took a couple tries before we got it, with a little encouragement from Mark Campbell and Jim Bertrand. I got the guts to ask her out on a basketball court, and the rest is history. Um, so Phil and Vicky, thank you so much for that. So Sean, could you please stand? Uh, we've heard about uh, we've heard about wives up here, and I will tell you that uh, from August to November, the blank stare that she describes in my face is something I have to apologize for. She knows that uh, it's very difficult to be a coach's wife and to also to be a player's mom at the same time, and she's been in the middle of some really tough situations. Um, but I will tell you that the greatest blessing I've ever had in my whole life was that phone call and my commitment to you and your commitment to me. You're the most beautiful, amazing person in the entire world, and I love you dearly. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you.